Welcome back to the greenhouse this morning. We are out here making a fire, getting some tea going, and I wanted to share all of the things that you can grow to forage to make your own tea. First of all, welcome back, and if you're new, welcome. And we're going to cover a whole bunch of native and some non-native zone four, zone five perennial items that you can forage yourself to make tea out of. And most of them have health benefits for you and some type of medicinal purpose. So these are all very good plants to have growing around the homestead. Now if all of that sounds interesting to you, that is pretty much all we do on the homestead and we try and share it free, easy, and a lot of self-sufficiency ideas. So please consider subscribing to the channel because that's pretty much all we do here. So we would like to share all of this information with you guys and let's get into this. We have a ton of items here that you can see that we are going to be sharing and we're going to go across the entire board here. I want to do some of the native stuff to zone five, zone four area, and then I'll do some stuff that we can plant from other areas. First things first, most of these are very easy to forage. Most of them are thornless. I think our goji berries are some of the only thorned varieties of plants we have out here today. And I really do encourage everybody as a disclaimer to do your own research on anything you're going to ingest if you have any medical conditions. If you're a healthy person, you would be all right to make a small amount of tea with any of these items here and you do not have any negative side effects. So I believe in natural healing and it does work. So I will share this with everybody, but as a disclaimer, I would say do your own research, just do check it out also. So first things first, I'm just kind of laying out here on one of my sandbags. They're pretty comfortable actually. We've got our lavender, I'm trying to get it to focus here on the lavender we've got some beautiful lavender flowers growing behind me in the greenhouse actually and then we've got our pine needles now this is a big large thick needle and these are very very high in vitamin C very good for you very tasty to make in a tea another great one that we like to do is our blackberries now these are a triple crown thornless blackberries and as long as they're not sprayed with any chemicals you're good to go so we just rinse them off a little bit no bugs no bird poo and stuff and then we're basically just dipping them in the tea <laughs> steeping these leaves brews a nice little tea and it's not super potent or anything but it is tasty it's interesting so we've got some of our raspberries also these are a thornless raspberry leaf so we've got our raspberries our blackberries and then another great leaf that you can grow that we have an abundance of is strawberry leaves so clean strawberry leaves you can brew a tea out of it's got nutrition for you a little bit of taste a little bit of flavor and it's not bad an airplane going overhead here Another great tea that everybody can be brewing is dandelion tea. This is a dandelion root here, and we've got the dandelion leaves. And that dandelion is very good for you. The whole entire dandelion is edible, every part of it. So don't forget to plant and reproduce those dandelions. So we let them spread, we'll give them a patch, and we'll save all the seeds, which everybody's like, oh, a dandelion's just a weed, we're gonna spray Roundup on them. Yeah, that's absolutely terrible so we don't do that and we like to propagate them and we find them in the greenhouse as they blow in here just naturally or brought in by bugs or birds or bunny rabbits or whatever and they just grow on their own so we'll pull them out use them and boil them up and stuff you can make dandelion honey all types of stuff with dandelion we also like to take some of our own honey and we like to mix it with dandelions when we're brewing it we can make a little tea out of it use the leaves or whatever and that's good for you too so there's a lot of uses for all of these native plants so there's so many varieties of mint I have just a bee balm here this is a mint family so we've got bees balm that's a bergamot that's actually a native plant here and then we've got some of our spearmint this is a nice light spearmint almost just smells identical to gum and then we've got some of our chocolate mint here uh, peppermints there's all types of mints that you can be growing and using and just cutting and coming again they will just keep reproducing we've got mint in the corner of the greenhouse and it almost works like a pest repellent at the same time you can hear my shade cloths getting ripped around. We've got like 50 mile an hour winds out there today. And one more on the minty note, we've got this lemon balm here also. Lemon balm is another great one. That's super flavorful. And when you're looking to add sugar, we've got this here. This is stevia. We grow our own stevia. That's a zone seven perennial, so we can keep it alive in the greenhouse, but not outside. So with the mint tea, simple, 
easy edible leaves make for simple easy tea very easy to do you just steep the leaves and brew yourself some mint tea so moving on to some options for when you're sick or getting sick we've got some of our rosemary we've got a thyme plant here got my thyme little bush here we've got a ton of those thyme bushes they just grow so readily that airplane's making his way back over our property hopefully he's taking pictures and he sends me an aerial photo or something like that if you're watching please send me that photo and he's probably gonna charge me 250 dollars for it so we've got this oregano here also trying to focus here the oregano oil in there is super potent and it knocks out a lot of germs bacteria viruses it is very very good for you all three of those are great for when you're sick because they really knock out those cold viruses and germs another interesting one is this mallow root we've got this basically marshmallow plant but you use the root or the flowers here now we've got mallow and i've got some echinacea or cone flower the indians used to use this as a healing herb and again with our bee balm those are all great healing herbs that are old ancient remedies that are good for you and i encourage everybody to do their research on these and find out what they can use them for now this is not a native plant but this is a very interesting one these goji berries they start to grow thorns after the second or third year of growth i believe and they just produce an absolute ton of berries here and you can dry them out you can throw them in tea they are cancer fighting very high in antioxidants very very good for you ancient chinese remedy it dates back centuries so we are working with very good medicinal plants here and all around healing plants now chicory mullein rose hips and pineapple weed there's a few others that i didn't mention that i didn't have to display but i thought i had quite a bit to show everyone and this is all stuff we've used ourselves to make tea and it's very good for you and we've had no adverse effects so we thought we would share this with everybody to, to give everybody ideas of what you can grow for your own natural forage now i'd really like to thank everybody for watching this video we're going to get cooking here i've got tea to brew and we're going to get another video on the way 